Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome Colby Flood, who is in Raleigh, North Carolina. How are you doing, Colby? I'm doing well, John. How are you doing today? Doing fantastic. And Colby is the CEO of Brighter Click. And what we're going to talk about today is how you can actually lead your client communication through education. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people think, okay, well, client communication is information, inf you know, is, is providing information, but in providing information isn't the same as providing education or educating them as they go along, right? Very much, yeah. So you can focus on providing them with information on what is going on in their account, but at Brighter Click in specific, we really focus on providing education to our clients. So we want to be able to give them the understanding of why the results are happening and then what we can do with that in the future if it's positive or how we can avoid it in the future if it's negative. That's kind of a very granular aspect of it, but we, we really want to see how we can help educate our clients to understand what's going on in the landscape and how they can continue to grow. Yeah, and and I think part of the th part of the issue today is people are so overwhelmed, right? There's so much information out there. There's so many products, so many services. Um, you know, we talk about like, oh well, you know, the 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 customer, the prospect is so much better informed than ever. But in fact, they're not really because they're so overwhelmed that they often don't know even how to move forward. So that's where education part becomes even more critical. Very much so. And I mean, uh, when you're working with a client, ideally, you're their partner, right? So you're helping them understand what's the best thing to focus on to really move the needle. They brought you on as an expert uh, or they bring us on as an expert to help them through that digital marketing landscape. So help them understand where their time, energy and resources need to go so that they can continue to grow. So I definitely agree. There's a lot of information out there and it's very easy to uh, overwhelm and decision fatigue from seeing all the stuff that's out there. So what are some of the ways that you can do this elegantly and, and systematically so you uh, so you can build on things as you go forward and really kind of, you know, do not just help the prospect slash customer, but also draw them in? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, the first thing that I'll say is it all starts in the sales process and the sales process mm -hmm. never ends, um, even when you sign them on as a client. When when we train our uh, client account managers, one of the first things that we tell them is a successful client call is marked by the feeling that you're getting on a call with an old friend to catch up and learn about their business. Now, back to the question that you asked on where does that start and how can you do it? <clears throat> At Brighter Click, so we run paid media and do creative strategy for e-commerce companies and sometimes software companies as well. Mm -hmm. And that starts in the sales process of educating them on their business numbers by running them through a potential profitability calculator so we can really look at the numbers and unbiasedly tell them based on their ad level costs, their website performance, their cost of goods sold, their AOV, their CPA. Is it possible to be profitable? And if it's not, which of those key factors is holding them back from that? And then who can we refer them to to help get that fixed? And then if they pass through that and they're able to be profitable, we'll run a free audit on their ad account with the whole goal, once again, of educating them, this is what's going wrong in your account, this is what's going right in your account, and here's what we would do differently. And then it kind of continues from there. Mm -hmm. And I feel sometimes is that people, um, you know, get very much into copycat. It's right. Oh, all my competitors are doing this and they're communicating this way and they're saying these types of things. And this is what I need to do as uh, to do as well, um, rather than look at, you know, what's effective, because maybe everything you're competitive doing isn't that effective or whatever. Or maybe it doesn't suit you. I mean, I've seen even recently like companies who who the way they communicate is even at odds with their kind of brand personality. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely important to make sure that you are communicating with clients a way that fits your business, the way that fits your core values and your core goals. At Brighter Click, ours is education first. So our goal is to educate our team members uh, by providing them with free educational resources. And then we focus on educating our clients as well. So that's what's true to our heart is educating. And we, we lead all communication through education with that. 
Mm -hmm. So when you work with clients, what are some of the what are some of the educational components that you you know advise them to create or help create? I mean, what are some of the ways that you actually in, engage the the end user? Yeah, for sure. That's a good question. So it varies depending on who we're talking to, right? So we're going to talk to the business owner a little bit different than the CMO. Um, mm -hmm. It really depends on who we're speaking with. But the first thing we do is we make sure that we, when we're talking about ad account performance, that we're on the same page with understanding what the metrics are that we're working with and what causes them to go up and down, positive and negative that way. And as we're doing uh, recurring meetings, check-in calls, we're providing them with education on what's causing the results and how we could change in the future. Another way that we do it, when we look at client requests and client updates, if there's ever an opportunity where we believe that uh, something that is requested in the account could have negative impact on the account, we don't just say, we shouldn't do that, or mm -hmm. that's not a good idea. We take the time to write two paragraphs in an email showing them, hey, if we decide to scale our ad spend $20,000 in two weeks with the same amount of creative that we have, what we're gonna see is our frequency is gonna go up and our first time impression ratio is gonna go right, way down, vice versa, but our click-through rates are gonna drop and our cost per click and our CPMs are going to rise as well. And what that does is that creates a higher ad level cost, driving less traffic to the website, and we're going to get less conversions. So if we want to scale, we would suggest doing it in 20% increments. And we're definitely going to need to look at reallocating some more creatives in the account. That second explanation sounds a lot better than mm -hmm. just saying, no, that's not a good idea. Sure. We can't do that. So. No, no, I like that. I like that a lot. So your goal as you go along with your with your clients is for them to, you know, you obviously you said education is is a big thing for you guys. So is for you is for them to become more and more um, educated and aware and able to make, um, you know, in collaboration to able to make even better decisions or even start to figure some of these things out by themselves. So they feel like they're they're gaining some level of autonomy almost. Exactly. I mean, we want them to be able to uh, measure our performance. Like we want them to be able to understand if things are going right or if things are going wrong. Um, we don't necessarily want them to be a media buyer because they don't want that. We want to help mm -hmm. them however they want to grow. So yeah, the, the end goal, ultimately we run Facebook ads, Google ads, we do creative strategy and consulting, um, but we try to focus on the whole business and call out opportunities across their whole business, email marketing, SMS marketing, whatever it may be, and send them those referrals because we know that they have the opportunity for us to partner with them to help them grow. So yeah, that's our goal, growth. Um, so how so how big a challenge is it today given the you know the online ad space, you know, say, you know, Google ads and all of that? I mean, there's been an enormous amount of money pumped in and large companies are always pumping tons of money into this and it makes it um you know, driving up costs. Like how do you how do you when you're working with customers, how do you navigate around, you know, these behemoths just driving costs up everywhere and like keywords, expenses and all that? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I'll answer that specifically to paid media channels like mm -hmm. TikTok and, and Facebook and not, not as much Google, but TikTok, Facebook and the social media channels. It pushes us back to understanding that you have to be focused on uh, branding, uh, messaging, creative, like what, who is your target audience and what message are you portraying to them? Facebook ads in specific, but also TikTok and LinkedIn, they've gotten away from being about um, specific like audience strategies and bid strategies. And it's more so about creative testing and really focus on having the right creative and messaging. So we work with our clients to make sure they are pushing out their founder story, their brand mission. Are they sustainable business? Like what messaging themes can they have out there? And that is how you can navigate through the, the whales in the, in the ocean, but also all the noise that's out there and really create a memorable experience for uh, the end user. Yeah, and I think you do, it's something there that you just mentioned uh, again is like the ideal, you know, customer, the ideal target buyer. Um, this is something that I think a lot of people still don't do a great job of, or did a while ago, and they kind of like haven't updated it. So when you when you work with companies, how much of your work is initially like really tying down who the target profile is? 
Yeah, the first 30 to 45 days, honestly, it depends. You know, some companies um, mm -hmm. don't have that CMO role filled that would take care of that opportunity. So they're not able to provide clearly defined buyer persona or ICPs. Um, but when they don't have that, we focus on looking at the data that we can access, which is uh, Google Analytics. We want to understand what we can see there. And then we work based on our experience to create our own hypothesis of what we think those target audiences will look like, age, um, gender, location, uh, interest. Are they a traveler? Do they stay at home and watch Netflix? And we go through the, the list of opportunities that we have, and we do pretty extensive audience testing with the messaging that we have. So really the first 30 to 45 days is not so just focused on audiences, but also the brand messaging, the creative style that they have. So we can really nail that down. We can have understanding of what we need to recreate in the future and then look at uh, scaling their account down the road. No, absolutely. And and uh, and then when you, um, you know, once all of that is established and you move into the next phase, how do you work to select which are the right channels for them and where they, you know, where they should focus and how wide they should go or how narrow, et cetera? That's a great question. You might hate this answer because it can be conditional, <laughs> but um, <laughs> the, actually the first thing we tell clients to do, so if they come on board for service X, like let's say it's Facebook ads, we mm -hmm. get that channel sustainable and scalable. And then the first thing we tell them to do after that is make sure that your website performance is good. Is there any CRO work that is currently needed? Make sure your whole funnel is uh, actually catching people and keeping them. So website is your email marketing. Do you have all of the nurture sequences? Do you have all the follow-up emails? Are you sending them out monthly? Are you doing SMS marketing? What is your retention like? Let's focus on that before we focus on we selling you anything else. We don't do email marketing. We don't do CRO. We don't do SMS, but we know it's very important. So we'll give referrals out for that. And once they do that, or if they already have, then the next channel can really depend on um, what industry they're in. Like for some beauty business, maybe we want to look at Pinterest. Um, for most businesses, Google ads does apply, right? So mm -hmm. generally we'll go to Google ads next, but it can depend on the actual business uh, and how either niche they are to a specific platform like Pinterest or how viral they have kind of opportunity wise. And if so, then we would go towards TikTok. All right. Um, you know, that's interesting. And on um, so... I've seen I've seen some companies, uh, you know, attempt to go the TikTok route that doesn't suit them and other ones that, you know, gone that it does suit them. And I guess that's again, um, how often do you have to help your customers maybe not run after shiny new toys or really like figure out, you know, because maybe you say that maybe, you know, the right channel for somebody is not the channel they think they should be on or the sexiest or newest one. Yeah, I would say, uh, especially relating to TikTok, that is a very difficult channel for a lot of people. And, and we do try to focus on the um, historic channels, I'll call it. Uh, they haven't been mm -hmm. on that long, but Facebook, <laughs> Google and things like that, more so over the brand new channel. There's a lot of opportunity in the in the new pond, but there's also a lot of learning opportunity as well. So yeah, we generally um, focus on what the client's core initiatives are, like what, what are they really looking to achieve in terms of sales and, and things like that, and then match them with a platform that that would go with. And we see a lot more um, sustainable growth with things like Facebook, with things like Google that have been around for a while. Mm -hmm. So um, just going back to Google for a minute, then how do, uh, how do you, um, you know, help your customers really optimize that channel? Because I feel like it's one that is a, a lot of people don't optimize or there's a lot of so-called experts out there, but you don't really see fantastic results for them. And it and it always seems like it's such a, a complicated thing to do, or at least that's yeah. how it's portrayed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it. It's got its own learning curve, just like Facebook ads does, right? Um, and there's some additional updates that have come out recently, Performance Max, that some accounts have seen great results with and some accounts have seen okay or not as good results with. In terms of how do we optimize it, that's there's a lot of different ways, right? I mean, it really depends on the, the level of the account, where they're at with things, um, but really focusing on going back to the drawing board when needed and auditing, auditing the account 
to understand where they're going wrong. Is it their keywords? Is it their negative keywords? Are they running the right type of uh, campaigns? Are they running the same product too many times in campaigns? Like what, what specifically is causing the negative results in the account? And then from there, we can start to optimize it down. And sometimes just like with Facebook ads, it can be more so the website than it can be the actual ad account. So we take the full funnel into equation when we look at that. Um, yeah, because that's a the, the website. That's an interesting point as well, because I, I, I feel because of all these other things going on, I think people are not spending as much time thinking about their website or how their website performs because they're kind of thinking, well, websites are kind of, oh, you know, we need it and it's there and it does whatever. But we're, we're doing all these other stuff. But uh, so the focus on the web on getting your website right is, is critical. Yeah. It definitely is. I mean, that's where a lot of the conversions happen. Now, what I'll say for e-commerce in specific, your website is your pipeline. Like that is where all of your mm -hmm. performance happens. That's where your sales happen. And you need to make sure that you're staying on top of your load speed, your add to cart percentage, your abandoned cart rate, all of those things. That's super important. Now, if we're looking at something like uh, software, for example, um, there's a lot of factors that go into play in the dark funnel that can really help out. Um, and conversions can happen outside of your website potentially um, before they even get to the site. So the website for the software side of things is a little bit different. That's that's your endpoint. That is where they finally book a call or sign up for your product led product there. Um, but it's also kind of like a, a quality assurance and, and authority builder there as well. So e-commerce, I would say, yeah, definitely very, very important. Um, but if you're looking at software, definitely also take into account like LinkedIn organic strategy and things like that, because those are very important. No, absolutely, absolutely, and um, and obviously LinkedIn for <clears throat> for a lot of businesses is one of the the key areas to be in. So um, uh, so tell me, in the last few minutes we have here, where, what what's the future of of uh, of advertising, and where do you see this space going? And is there anything coming down the pike that people should be aware of? Oh, you said we just have a few minutes. That's a, there's a yeah. lot of opportunity, I think. Um, you know, what I can say, if we're looking uh, platform specific, we're at an interest, interesting time where it, it seems like information and data is the new oil or is the new oil rush. And we have Apple, Facebook, Google, all of these platforms really focusing on being the holder of that information. So we know iOS 14.5 happened. I mean, looking forward, I think it's it's readily apparent that Apple's going to be coming out with a display network or some kind of advertising network that will be a um, competitor of Google, that will be a competitor of Facebook. It'll be interesting to see where Facebook goes with things because their COO, Cheryl Greenberg, recently stepped down and the person that was working under her is stepping into that role. And I hear talk about Facebook is in the works of changing their front end platform to be more search base focused which would be very interesting. Um, in terms of where is advertising going, I really think it's going towards content creation, content creators, and really focusing on um, that kind of native content that goes through TikTok and through Instagram. Um, it'll be interesting to see how things change. I won't start to try to get on a web 3.0 conversation and blockchain mm -hmm. and all that, because I think there's a lot of different things that could happen there if we go in that direction. Sure. I mean, that's uh, that's fascinating about, you know, Apple getting into the into the business um, as well. And uh, and it seems, though, that the, the space is going to, you know, continue to grow and evolve. And obviously it's going to become probably more specialized, which means, you know, interacting with people like yourselves and organizations like yourselves that are specialized and really understand this space is is a is going to be more important, probably. Yeah, the, the trade off you have is centralization of communication. And by that, I mean, you can hire an agency that does everything and you can centralize your communication. But a lot of times you lack the uh, expertise for each platform that's being managed. When you focus on hiring out an agency to do one or two specific things, you're getting a lot better quality. Yes, you have to diversify your communication across different uh, agencies but you get a lot better output and a lot better quality. So I definitely do think that's important. Definitely find people that excel in the area that you're looking for. And two, um, you don't always need to do everything. If you have a very big budget, you can, but sometimes you wanna build out one or two pipelines before you really focus on trying to do everything at once.
Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And and I think that one of the one of the things that we're learning now is that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of specialization now. So sometimes you need people with specialized skills, but you may not need them all the time or you may not need them permanently or whatever. So, you know, you could spend your whole life adding more and more experts at each field and just building out massive teams of people who are busy some of the time. Yeah, and I think um, uh, potential recession coming around, I think we're definitely going to see the gig economy boom again and going to see a lot of freelancers coming out, people really starting to focus on specializing in certain things. And it'll be interesting to see how that ties into the hiring uh, field down the road six months, 12 months from now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I think we're going to see a lot of changes. Well, listen, Colby, this has been fantastic. And all of Colby's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Brighter Click. Yeah, thanks for thanks for allowing me to. So I started Brighter Click in January of 2019. We're a paid social agency that works with e-commerce companies. Um, we grew 300% in 2021, and we're looking to keep right. that momentum up. And we're looking to help our clients grow at an equal rate uh, as well. So we're looking forward to uh, expanding service a little bit in the next one to two months of really focusing on creative strategy uh, and creative consulting. And would definitely love to connect with anybody that has open opportunity there. Yeah, listen, fantastic. Listen, thanks very much, Colby. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.